Alright, so for problem 2.9-7, it says a 60 inch diameter excuse me, concrete test cylinder is subjected to a compressive load P equals 110 kips, as shown in figure. The cylinder fills along the plane that makes an angle of 60 degrees to the horizon. A determine the compressive axis stress in the cylinder when it reaches failure load, and B determine the normal stress and shear stress on the failure plane at failure. Okay, so for part A, it's pretty simple. This is like 2.1, 2.3 um, sections of knowledge. You should be able to fully just do it in your head, basically. Um, and get it right, it's P over A, you know, apply load divided by the area to give you the normal stress, uh, which is, you know, provided given, do some small calculations so you're able to get it, right? Okay, so now let's moving at, let's move on to B, which B section is purely what uh, 2.9 is all about, right? It's to understand the inclined plane, inclined area, and failures, and how it's being applied, and etc. Okay, so we know that the normal, determine the normal stress, right? So if this is the, the load, then the normal stress should be like, okay, this is terrible. Um, but you get the idea, um, should be something like that, right? And then here is a, a shear force, right? And then the P, you know, because the normal, like the P normal and the V normal, it's it's um, they sorry stress. Oh yeah, it's it's P. So far we're just looking at P's, right? Like P N, V N, it's they make up P, right? So okay, um, you should know if this equation. By now, um, and cosine of third, and then oh, sorry, it's um, tau and t equals x sine of theta cosine of theta negative. This is uh, x and this is uh, n, right? So you should know these equations. Uh, I did a duration of these two equations, how we got these two uh, from uh, 2.57. I mean, sorry, 2.9-5 uh, in that video. So if you want to know how to do this, uh, how I derived it, uh, go ahead and go watch that video. But uh, yeah, you should be able to uh, uh, know this and then you should be able to receive this on your formula sheet during the exam. Your professor will probably give you this to you, unless it's open book, then you know you have everything. And then remember, remember, you can replace this and this with the trigonometry identity. I think it's like one plus two cosine, of something like that. It's late. I don't remember honestly. It's you know sine of two of this. I think equals two times sine cosine theta. Yeah, I think something along the line, right? Um, you can replace the double angles into these. Uh, because it's an advantage because it's it, you know we only deal with sine or cosine so when it's at a failure then we can determine it's like oh like what angle caused the failure you know then we can just throw oh look sine of two you know two two theta you know it needs to be 45 45 degrees well then you know that's you know 45 divided by two is 22.5 degrees right it's so simple for simplicity anyway um, getting a little abstract. So going back to the original question, um, we just need to do some simple geometry uh, duration, right? This is a cross, right? By two straight lines, which means this must be 60 degrees. Like you should know these, like this and this always equals, 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 like any two straight lines, right? As long as they cross, like the two pointing angles are always the same. So if this is 60, then this is 90, then that one must be 30 degrees, right? As you can tell, this is straight and this is parallel to this line. This is parallel to this line, right? So it means this must be 30. If this is a right, right angle, this must be 60, okay? So now we know all the angles that we need to know. 
Um, so you might ask, okay, what is theta? Now in the book, it is just strictly, uh, you know, demonstrated, showed, and, and stated that the angle between n, or you know, this n, p, p n, or you know, stress n, and and um, and the p and the and the actual one, right? So in this case, this is p n, right? So this is this is p n. This is P, which means the angle in between is 6 degrees, and that's theta, right? If this is uh, like N, this is X, then this is theta, right? And this is N, in the N direction, right? This is the shear force. This is the uh, T direction, we call it. So I hope this I uh, was able to, to explain it clearly. I hope you understood. Uh, that's how we determine theta. So in this case, it's 60, right? So now we just say, well, n, sorry, let me change the color. That's a little hard to see, um, which means this n equals 3.89 times cosine of 60 uh, square, 60 degree and then this is uh, tau nt which is the shear stress negative nx which is 3.89 uh, negative and times sine of 60 and cosine of 60 uh, degree right uh, in this case i think um normal stress should get on the inclined plane should gives you around 0 0.973 ksi in compression and then um, the shear one should be somewhere around 1.685 uh, KSI. So yeah, uh, these are the two answers. And um, that will give you, yeah, nothing. Perfect. Um, great. Hopefully, uh, I was able to explain everything clearly, you know, teach you a few tricks and able to identify a few things. Um, so yeah, this kind of question is not really hard. I mean, 2.9 is all about income plans. Do some practice. If you, you know, do a few, and then you, you know, you think it's a piece of cake. And I, I'll suggest you to, to fully understand these sections, right? Because these little things will come back eventually in the later units. And then, you know, it's, it's better to be fluent in this, you know, right now instead of, you know, struggling about it later, right? So yeah. Okay, well, um, hopefully this was helpful. Good luck on your studies, and I'll see you in my future videos. Bye.